Hello everyone. So welcome to another video. So in this video, we are going to discuss the another problem from UGB uh, 2024, and uh, so uh, this is going to be the fifth problem. Okay. So uh, yeah. So the fifth problem, as you can see, it's saying that uh, we have a polynomial. So basically, in this question paper, like we are having two polynomial questions. So uh, anyways, uh, coming down to this polynomial question, that is. Uh, let p of x be a polynomial with real coefficients so it belongs to rx and alpha 1 alpha 2 dot dot alpha k be the distinct real roots of p of x equals 0 now these are distinct real roots of uh, p of x equals 0 so that means like uh, the real roots are given but it might happen that you uh, you, you are having a, a, again complex roots as well and so on so uh, we will talk about uh, we will cover up all these uh, cases but uh, for talking about the uh, real root, so it's alpha 1, alpha 2 till alpha k, okay? So, uh, because it's given that be distinct real roots of p of x. So, uh, now if p dash x is the derivative of p, show that for each i, i going from 1 to dot dot, dot k, when x is tending to alpha i, we have x minus alpha i p dash x by p of x is equals to some r i for some positive integer r i. Okay, so uh, we we have to first uh, like there are there are two things. Not only that we have to show that this limit exists, also we have to show that whatever be the limit, the limit is uh, some integer. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's uh, then get started. So the yeah, so this is problem five. So now what we are saying is that like uh, we know the roots. So p of x is let's say we have a leading coefficient which many students forget to write and uh, again x minus alpha 1 then uh, alpha now again this also many students forget alpha 1 can have multiplicity. So let it be like d1 then x minus alpha 2 whole to the power d2 dot dot, dot till x minus alpha k whole to the power dk okay. And now you would say that uh, oh, where are like there could be complex roots as well and some other parts of the polynomial as well. So again for that we can do what we can do is we can multiply it with a h of x. Okay so such that h of x is having complex roots but again uh, let's first do it with just the real part and uh, real part means only the with the real roots and uh, then I'll show that this h of x if you keep it it's nothing but it will just get dissolved easily it will go to uh, it will get dissolved while we are taking the limits okay because why why am i just uh, letting that h of x for now because uh, calculation uh, if you do it gets a little bit complicated okay uh, not too complicated but a little complicated so first let's do it with this form okay so uh, yeah so uh, now is is it clear like uh, alpha 1 is occurring with multiplicity d1 alpha 2 is occurring with multiplicity d2 and so on so now these di's are integers okay and uh, and also like uh, let's go back to the problem ri we have to show uh, for some positive integer ri right so now try to see that uh, this di's are also positive integers because alpha 1 is a root it's given so d1 can't be 0 uh, so it's an integer and it has to be greater than or equals to 1. So all these di's are positive integers as well. So till here it's clear. I think you are getting the hint that uh, I mean what could be ri. That is it's basically di. So still if you haven't tried it out, do try it out. I think this hint is enough. So uh, anyways coming down to uh, p dash x because we have uh, this c. Then in this limit, we have x minus alpha i. So x is tending to alpha i. Uh, then we have this by p of x. p of x we know for the form. The only thing that we don't know is p dash x, right? So, yes. Now what I'll do is like, so again, I'll try to use the idea that is, uh, suppose x is tending towards alpha i, okay? So some alpha i, let it be alpha 1 or alpha 2, anything. So let's suppose le let's say that x is tending towards alpha 2, okay? And it's if it's x x is not equal to alpha 2, then it's like uh, x minus alpha 2 is not 0, right? So what we can do is we can write 
uh, this as like a times the product that is uh, j not equals to let's say i x minus alpha j so all those j are getting multiplied d j and then what i am doing is i am just taking so now my x is tending towards alpha i okay remember that so i am dividing by x minus alpha i whole to the power d i okay why because again uh, you won't understand at the very first step why uh, i did this uh, while i do the calculation so it's just a backtrack that's why uh, i i need this that's why i'm writing this okay so uh, again uh, again try to note that like x is not equals to alpha i so uh, x is not equals to alpha i okay so that means x is in some neighborhood of alpha i fine x is tending towards alpha i and it's in some neighborhood of alpha i it's not equals to alpha i so okay now let's take the p dash x so p dash uh, p dash x will be let's see so you can very well understand that uh, just look at the p p uh, p of x so if you differentiate it so one at a time so uh, x minus let's say alpha i so di will come uh, di will come and then you will have whole to the power di minus 1 and the rest will be as same so uh, we can write that in notation form that is let's say p dash x is a time summation i going from 1 to k and uh, di x minus alpha i whole to the power di minus 1 and uh, so this is this is the term which is getting differentiated and the rest of the terms are the same so product j not equals to i and we have x uh, minus alpha i whole to the power d uh, so let's let's take it to be j okay so x minus alpha j because the product is going uh, for j x minus alpha j whole to the power d j okay i think uh, that's fine uh, for the derivative and this sum is running from 1 to k because each of those components are getting um, uh, differentiated and the rest remains the same and this a you can take it common at the very beginning okay so it's a leading coefficient okay so now what do i have like so i can uh, write this as so summation i going from 1 to k uh, so d times x minus alpha i d i minus 1 sorry minus 1 and this is in the power and now i have this product so this product i can so j is not equals to i so i can write it as like uh, some p of x divided by x minus alpha i whole to the power di okay so as i told you that x is not equals to some alpha i so it's in the neighborhood okay in some alpha i so i can i i can write this okay so it's valid now uh, sorry this is there from the last solution we did so yeah now Yes, now what is this boiling down to? Just look at here. That is x minus alpha i whole to the power d minus 1 will get cancelled out. And so we will have this as summation i going from 1 to k um, d. Sorry, I forgot here. This is d i. This is d i. Uh, that's why I said like a little bit of um, complexity will come with this differentiation. Uh, so d i. I have to be a little bit careful about my uh, uh, about my calculations. So yeah, anyways, it's coming out to be p x divided by x minus alpha i. Okay, I hope you can see that. So now try to understand that. Now we will uh, go back to our original uh, that is limit so x minus alpha i times p dash x by p of x okay so now let's get back into that form so 
x minus alpha i into p dash x divided by p of x. So now we can replace this uh, what we figured out for p dash x. So that will come out to be i going from uh, so here here since uh, like x is tending towards a particular alpha i so let's use some other uh, index so let's take it to be some l going from 1 to k and uh, we have here x minus alpha i uh, so that particular alpha i where x is tending to and then we have p dash x to be p of x this di is also there divided by we have that p of x below which will get cancelled out and we have x minus uh, so now uh, see this this was like i was going from 1 to k so this here it's nothing but i'm just changing the index so it's l is going from 1 to k so this is uh, minus alpha l okay so now try to understand that only in one case when uh, that is uh, you have like l is going from 1 to k right so there will be a state like l will be equal to i so in that particular case this px px will uh, obviously are getting cancelled out and uh, x minus alpha i and x minus below we will have x minus alpha i that will cancel out and that term will give us uh, di okay that term will give us di and the rest of the terms let's write it again that is summation l not equals to uh, i and l is going from uh, so we can write it like this L is going from 1 to k and uh, L is not equals to i, uh, i yeah so L is not equals to i and this will be d L okay yeah that's what I said like there will be uh, notations and all these things so this is d L because I just put this one here so that will be d L yeah the rest are fine so i hope you can understand but uh, just a matter of calculation and the index you have to perfectly uh, uh, write it down so this is dl uh, then it's basically like px px getting cancelled out x minus alpha i so this alpha I is that alpha I particular i where uh, x is tending towards alpha i now this divided by x minus alpha l now this sum is going okay now try to understand that when like the denominator okay dl is like always a positive integer x minus alpha l that is never equals to zero because x is tending towards alpha i and uh, here l is not equals to i so the numerator goes to zero and so this part goes to zero so that means we can say that uh, as you saw like uh, we had to figure out the limit so limit x tends to alpha i so coming back here that is now let's uh, put the limit so limit x tends to alpha i sorry alpha i uh, what was it x minus alpha i p dash x by p of x okay so this thing is coming out to be then uh, our d i because this part is going towards 0 as x tends to alpha i ok so now d i so uh, for any alpha i like you will have d i so for alpha 1 this limit will be d 1 for alpha 2 this limit will be d 2 and all these in uh, d i's are positive integers ok so yeah d i's belongs to the naturals and uh, they are greater than equals to 1 and they are all positive and the limit exists and it's equal to di and uh, hence proved ok so we are done uh, with this as well so again I hope uh, you like the solution so the thing is that uh, uh, I mean uh, I mean uh, we, we kind of like uh, somewhat use some uh, real analysis concepts here that is uh, and also these concepts are totally not in real analysis they should be taught in calculus as well so uh, the thing is that uh, again uh, uh, we here in even in this problem we use a little bit of real analysis that is 
we just took that uh, this part that is a uh, oh i forgot to mention about the hx yes coming to hx uh, so uh, where did we use here uh, we used it all uh, as you can see that is x minus alpha i so in some neighborhood we are taking so that's where we are using otherwise uh, it's a normal concept even so uh, anyways let's leave it uh, coming down to if there was some hx here okay so hx multiplied then try to understand that uh, here again while we are while we are like uh, uh, taking the derivative so in the derivative uh, I, I, so this is the this is like uh, i mean uh, here there will be that uh, hx as well coming into the picture but then there will be uh, another term which is basically like uh, hx into uh, like h dash x and then the whole uh, p of x will be multiplied right uh, I mean p of x means the uh, h of x uh, the remaining portion will be multiplied and that part will basically vanish out if x is tending towards alpha i and uh, yeah because uh, that will contain alpha i and uh, in the product and uh, that will vanish out and what if like uh, the other part that is uh, in this product in this product we will have like h i there so that doesn't matter because that will go inside p of x here okay that will go inside p of x here and uh, then divided by sorry uh, yeah so that will go inside this p x here and uh, again it will be the almost the same thing divided by x minus alpha i whole to the power di and uh, finally when you are taking that limit here then this p x and that p x getting cancelled out and that that h dash x part uh, so h dash x and multiplied with the rest of x minus alpha 1 whole to the power d1 x minus alpha 2 whole to the power d2 so all those will be multiplied and since x is tending towards alpha i that will go to zero okay so uh, i hope i have been able to explain like why if even if there is uh, h of x getting multiplied here so that won't make like in uh, i mean any difference so uh, anyways uh, uh, i mean uh, you can you can so while writing the proof you can directly start with that h of x and go through all these uh, things and uh, keep the h of x or else at the end you can just uh, say this and write it and explain it why h of x if you even keep it it will just vanish out okay so anyways uh, i hope uh, that's the complete solution and i hope uh, you liked it so again if you like the solution please do put put a like and uh, please do share it among the other uh, learners, other students who need such help. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.